Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm all about creative journaling, memory keeping, and sharing tips to help you capture your travel memories. In my last video, How to Create a Travel Journal for Past Trips, I shared how I pieced together trip details even if I did not take notes. If you missed it, definitely check that out. I'll put the description box below. So in this video, we'll focus on documenting the first two days of our five-day Taiwan trip, way back in 2017. I'll share some snippets from that trip and I'll show you how I organized the photos and embellishments to bring these memories to life. So grab your journals and let's dive in. Day 1, October 19. From Manila, my close friend, family friends, and I arrive in Taiwan. At the airport, we were picked up by a large private bus which took us to Hotel B where we checked in. But before we dive into Day 2, let's start journaling about Day 1. These are the supplies I'm planning to use for this travel journal. I like prepping everything beforehand to ensure a smooth, destruction-free journaling process. See these image cutouts? I got them from the brochures I collected during the trip. So here's a quick journaling tip. You don't need to buy a lot of stationary supplies to create a beautiful travel journal. Brochures can be an excellent source of cute illustrations, maps, and cutouts that add a personal touch to your scrapbook. For the scrapbook travel journal, I'll be using my Camel Traveler's Notebook in the standard size by the Traveler's Company, along with a 003 unruled or blank insert. On our first page, I'll be documenting our flight from Manila to Taiwan using my plane ticket a photo of the meal I had on the plane, and some image cutouts from the brochure. Before I start pasting anything down, I like to arrange the layout first to see how everything fits together. This helps me visualize the page and make sure the design flows smoothly before committing to glue. This strip of polka dot paper is also from the brochure. In view of the design washi tapes, look for interesting patterns or designs while browsing your travel brochures. You can cut out these strips and use them as accents or borders in your journal. It's a great way to save money while still adding that decorative touch to your pages. Here I'm adding a washi tape that I bought during the trip. I like to keep a sense of consistency throughout my travel journal, so I'll be using the same washi tape across multiple pages. It ties everything together visually, giving the journal a cohesive and uniform look. This particular tape has a design that reminds me of the trip, which adds a personal touch to each page. Using the same washi tape also helps streamline the journaling process so I don't spend too much time deciding on different tapes for each spread. Now moving on to our next spread, I'll be documenting our arrival at our Taiwan International Airport. I have a large airplane cut out from the travel brochure which fits perfectly to highlight the theme of our arrival. Along with that, I have a map of Taiwan and some information about the area also cut from the brochure. Taoyun International Airport is the main international gateway to Taiwan. It's a major hub for travelers offering modern facilities, duty-free shopping, and a variety of dining options. The airport is well connected to Taipei and surrounding cities 
throughout the Taiwan MRT system, making it convenient for travelers to reach their destination. So as a journaling tip, using maps or brochures from your trip adds a personal and meaningful touch to your travel journal. Plus, it's a free resource that can save you from buying too many decorative supplies. Just cut out interesting bits that resonate with your experience or show where you've been. I'm also adding a photo of the large bus that picked us up from the airport, giving a visual of how we traveled. By the way, if you want to know how I create and print tiny photos from my journal, just check out the video How to Create and Print Mini Photos for Memory Keeping, Scrapbooking, and Travel Journals. I'll put the link on the description box below. Here's a cute character illustration from the brochure as well, which has an attached speech bubble. There was a text inside the speech bubble, but I'm covering it up with another strip of paper. This way, I can customize it by adding my own text, Welcome to Taiwan, to mark the start of our adventure. Covering up small sections like this allows for customization while still keeping the design elements of the original brochure intact. Here, I'm journaling about day one of our trip. It was a fairly simple day, primarily spending traveling and getting settled in. Since we were a group of seven, my close friend, family friends, and myself with most of our companions being seniors, we decided to go with a private tour for a more personalized and comfortable experience. This turned out to be the perfect choice, especially for the elderly in our group, as it allowed us to travel at a more relaxed pace ensuring everyone could enjoy the trip without feeling rushed or overwhelmed. The private tour gave us the flexibility to take things easy without worrying about rigid schedules or crowded public transport. It made coordinating our activities smoother and we had the convenience of a private bus to take us to and from the airport and other destinations. After arriving at the hotel and checking in, we took the rest of the evening to relax and prepare for the days ahead. It was a much-needed break after a long day of travel, especially for the seniors in our group. Taking this time to unwind allowed everyone to rest up for the exciting adventures we had planned. When it comes to journaling, my usual process to, is to add the big elements first, like photos, large cutouts, or maps. I then move on to smaller accents such as washi tape, stickers, or stamps to fill in the gaps and add decorative touches. After I'm happy with the layout, I start with the writing part, adding notes, memories, or interesting facts about the trip. This method helps me keep everything organized and balanced on the page before adding the journaling itself. On our next spread, I'm adding this colorful map of Taiwan along with a cutout from the brochure that includes useful information about Taiwan, such as the official language, population, and the currency they use. I love incorporating these kinds of details into my travel journals because it adds context and makes the pages more informative. For some added accents, I'm including a cute illustration of a bus featuring the adorable Taiwan bear, a national symbol of Taiwan, which adds a playful touch to the spread. I'll also be using the same washi tape from the previous page to create a cohesive look. I'm placing it along the bottom part of the page to tie everything together. To personalize it further, I'm stamping a few Taiwan bear stamps that I bought during the trip, which gives the page a fun and unique look. So as a journaling tip, repeating elements like washi tape and stamps throughout your journal can help create consistency, making the pages feel more connected while still allowing for creativity in each layout.
Now, on today to October 20th, where things got really exciting. We woke up early at the hotel and buffet breakfast and met our tour guide, Alice, in the lobby. Alice was super kind and greeted us with a traditional Taiwanese delicacy. After meeting Alice, we hopped on the bus and began our three and a half hour journey to Xinjing. Along the way, we made a quick stop at 85 Degree C Bakery Cafe. Our first major stop was Bowang Village, which is a charming mountain village nestled in the highlands. At Bowang New Village, we had lunch at a local restaurant called May Salong, and then we tried Yilan Scallion Pancake, which is a crispy, savory, and unique to Taiwan. After lunch, we headed to the green, green grassland at Singjing Farm, which is famous for its expansive fields and adorable grazing sheep. The fresh air and scenic views were unforgettable and trying the sheep milk ice cream added to the experience. After spending time at the farm, we traveled another hour and 42 minutes by bus to Sun Moon Lake, a serene and picturesque spot surrounded by mountains, which at Ainhan Resort and started exploring the area by foot. One of my favorite discoveries was Light Morning Stationery Shop nearby, which had the cutest Taiwan bare wooden stamps. Of course, I couldn't resist buying a set. After a fun day of exploring, we ended the dinner at a local restaurant, which was the perfect way to relax after such an eventful day. Now let's journal about day two. On this spread, I'll be adding the brochure and business card from Hotel B. The brochure includes photos of the rooms and amenities, so instead of cutting out individual images, I'll attach the entire brochure as a tip-in using translucent tape. This way, I can still flip through it without losing any details. The business card of the hotel as well as our tour guide's card will also be added as a tip-in just in case I need more room for writing later on. I'm also including our group photos, a picture of our buffet breakfast at the hotel, and a snapshot of the Taiwanese delicacy that our tour guide gave us. It was such a sweet and welcoming gesture. It was a sticky treat similar to mochi, but I'm not quite sure what it's called. If you know, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I've also added a photo of the 85 degrees C bakery where we stopped to buy some breads and pastries. If you're not familiar with it, it is a popular chain from Taiwan known for its fresh pastries, breads, and signature sea salt coffee. I've actually been to their branch in LA before, so it was fun to compare the two. The bakery in Taiwan definitely felt more authentic and the variety of the pastries was amazing. On the next spread, I'll be documenting our trip to Bowang Village, which is our first major stop located in Nantu County. I'll add a map of the county and an information cut out from the brochure along with some photos of the scenic village. Bowang Village is a charming mountain village nestled in the highlands. The views of the surrounding landscape were absolutely stunning. Rolling hills lush greenery, and a serene atmosphere that felt so peaceful. It has this quiet, rural vibe, almost like stepping into another world. The fresh mountain air and the calmness of the village made it the perfect retreat from the hustle and bustle of city life. I also have a picture and the business card of the local restaurant where we had lunch. May Salong, which serves traditional Taiwanese cuisine. On to the next spread, I'll be documenting our time at the green green grassland at Singjing Farm. Here, I have a photo capturing the breathtaking scenery of the farm, showcasing the lush green hills that stretch as far as the eye could see. The rolling landscape was dotted with fluffy sheep grazing peacefully, creating a picturesque scene that felt like stepping into a painting. 
Along with the sunny views, I'm including my personal photo with one of the adorable sheep we encountered during our visit. They were surprisingly friendly and made for a fun interaction. I'll also add the ticket we received to enter the farm as a keepsake, a reminder of this beautiful day. The atmosphere here was serene and refreshing making it a must-visit spot for nature lovers or anyone looking to unwind and soak in the beauty of the outdoors. Additionally, I'm adding the receipt from the delicious sheep milk ice cream bar we tried, which was a delightful treat on a warm day. The unique flavor was truly memorable. I'll also be including photos of the food stalls and the Yilan Scallion Pancake, we sampled, known for its crispy texture and a savory taste. So this spread will not only highlight our experiences at Singjing Farm, but also serve as a vibrant collection of memories that reflect the fun we had exploring the area and trying local delicacies. For our last spread for day two, I'll be pasting the map of Singjing Farm on the left page. This map will help visualize the layout of the farm and the areas we explored during our visit. On this spread, I'll also add the business card of our hotel at San Moon Lake, which will serve as a nice keepsake and reminder of our cozy accommodations by the lake. Additionally, I'll include the business card and a photo of the stationery shop where I purchased the adorable Taiwan Bear stamp set. These stamps have a special significance to me as they perfectly encapsulate the charm of Taiwan and will be a delightful addition to my journal. And that's it. Day 1 and Day 2 of our Taiwan ship are now documented in my journal. It's so fun to relieve these memories and I hope this gives you ideas for capturing your own travel experiences. Don't forget to check out my last video on how I piece together trip details without notes. If you're interested in more travel journaling inspiration, be sure to check out my, my travel journal playlist linked in the description box below. Now, I'd love to hear from you. What destination is at the top of your travel journal list and why? Share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more creative and travel journaling adventures. Until next time, happy journaling. Bye!